My name is James Wishart, and I'm a chemist at Brookhaven National Laboratory. I'm actually a radiation chemist, which means that I study the interaction of radiation with matter. We have different tools that we use to do these studies. They mainly include particle accelerators, including the Laser Electron Accelerator Facility, which is a picosecond electron accelerator for studying very fast chemical reactions. I'm studying ionic liquids, which are a kind of molten salt that melts below 100 degrees Celsius. Ionic liquids are liquids that are made completely of anions and cations, so they are liquid salts. Unlike solid salts, like this rock crystal of sodium chloride, if I dissolve this in water, I have an ionic solution, but it would not be the same thing as an ionic liquid. An ionic liquid looks something like this. It's a, could potentially a clear liquid, and it's a little bit syrupy because the viscosity of ionic liquids are a little higher than those of regular solvents. And that actually makes one of the interesting features of ionic liquids is their viscosity and how it affects chemical reactions that occur within them. Other important applications of ionic liquids include solar photochemical cells, batteries, fuel cells, and electrochromic devices, for instance, in displays. And if you run electrochromic devices or physical actuators backwards, you can actually get energy harvesters that take mechanical energy and convert it into electrical energy. All of these applications involve the movement of charge. So you need a material that is an electrolyte that will respond to the movement of charge. But because ionic liquids have these unusual properties in, in terms of viscosity in their dynamic response, it's very important to understand how ionic liquids respond to that movement of charge. One of the concerns about the resurgence in the development of nuclear power is what do you do with the waste? Because our waste handling technology basically comes from the Cold War and the metallurgical chemistry of the 20s and 30s, where the idea was to uh, recover the uranium and plutonium, and all the rest of the waste was just supposed to be buried. But that waste is going to be radioactive for a very long period of time. It's better to process that waste, to take the elements that are going to be radioactive for long periods of time, and burn them up in a new generation of reactors, so that the total amount of waste is greatly reduced and can be responsibly managed. Ionic liquids can play an important role in that because of their novel and very useful chemistry. In order to understand the fundamental radiation chemistry of ionic liquids, the processes that occur after the radiation has struck the material and you generate electrons and holes and then they react, we need very high time resolution. And we use the Laser Electron Accelerator Facility at Brookhaven to do that. We can see reactions that occur on the order of 10 to 15 picoseconds in ionic liquids. And that allows us to follow the solvation of the electron and other very fast reactions that occur, particularly when you have materials dissolved in ionic liquids like you will in a real processing system. We want to see how those materials scavenge the electrons even before they become solvated. And very recently, we have expanded the capability of that experiment using a technique that allows us to generate 140 different laser probe pulses to follow our electron pulse. We hope that our work will have a positive impact on the world's energy future by making it possible to efficiently recycle spent nuclear fuel. We also hope that the fundamental chemistry that we are studying will be useful to chemists who are using ionic liquids for chemical transformations, such as catalysis, and in the design of advanced devices to generate, store, and consume energy. It's an exciting time in the field of ionic liquids, and I know that JPCL will play a prominent role in promoting this research.